Hey Magic friends, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. Today we got Blogatog, that's right, Morrow or Rose Waters blog where he likes to uh, give some hints of things coming up in the new set. Today obviously on the docket, Outlaws at Thunder Junction. And he's got a few things to say to give us an idea of what we can expect. So before we get started, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Subscription's free, so are the comments down below, but try to be nice. It helps support the channel and uh, keep us sponsor free, or you know what that means commercials everywhere. But dun dun dun. Anyway, so also links in the description if you want to help out the channel, buying some cards and all that good jazz. So let's get on it. So, some things we can expect on the Outlaws of Thunder Junction a new batch of five related creature types. That's interesting. Um, a card capable of returning three different card types from the graveyard to the battlefield. Um, we've seen this before, especially in Ixalan. There was a card that returned, uh, I think it was a pirate, a vampire, and a soldier or something. So I'm expecting we'll probably see something like that again. Maybe it'll be a cowboy. Yeehaw. Um, a mechanic players have been asking us to do for many years gets made as the setting was the perfect place to finally do it. Hmm. I wonder what that is. I got no clue. Tell me down below. Dual lands with a land subtype that has never been on dual lands before. How cool would it be to have dual... Well, we've had dual, cover, dual uh, snow lands, haven't we? I wonder what the subtype could be. Hmm. It'll be interesting. A new uh, modal mechanic that introduces something different to think about. Well, that's very vague. Uh, a card that can swipe or exchange control of three different card types. At least seen stuff like that before. Uh, a new creature token that has the ability no creature token has ever had before. Hmm. Uh, that's a good one. Hard to say. Uh, a typical card... For skeletons and zombies. Oh, we're going to get another zombie master or skeleton master or lord type card. That'd be kind of cool. Creature tokens in the set. Some might have abilities. One on white sheep, a one on bird, vampire, rogue, red mercenary, two one green varmint, a white ox, white spirit, blue black zombie, three one red dinosaur, three three white angel, an elk, oko. Uh, red scorpion dragon, scorpion dragon, XX green elemental, and a star star blue ox. So, pretty much everything you can think of under the sun. So, yeah. Some of the planes with legendary villains in this set. Okay, so plane, so the legendary villains in this set are from these planes. Dominaria, Eldrin, uh, Fioria, Innistrad, Ixalan, Kaladesh, Kaldheim, Kalmagawa, Nukapenna, Ravnica, I mean, did we leave any out? Probably. But you get my point. Pretty much everybody in God's Green Earth. Um, next, here we have some rules text that will be showing up on cards. Then repeat this process X more times. We've kind of seen that before. It's probably on an X spell. Um, if it wasn't cast and no mana was spent to cast it. If it wasn't cat. If it wasn't cast... Or no mana was spent to cast it. So that's going to be interesting. There's all kinds of free casting going on. God knows what this could be. Uh, plotting cards from your hands cost two less. So I wonder if, now that I've read that, is plotting something like a face down card. Very interesting. Uh, you can't cast this spell during your first, second, or third turns of the game. Are they going to reprint Sarah Avenger? Ain't that the cards at two white? You can't cast on your first, second, or third turns a 3 3 flyer or something with vigilance or some crap. Uh, that card gains flashback zero. Ooh, so there's a spell that gives a card flashback zero. That's kind of cool. That's, uh, that's going to be very popular in several formats. Probably cost 20 mana. Anyway, target creature becomes a white rabbit with base power toughness 01. That is probably a blue card. Uh, when you win that flip, copy that spell. Oh boy, more coin flipping. That's just going to be fantastic. Um, if a triggered ability of a legendary creature you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. Now we've seen plenty of those. Uh, you get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase. Holy crap. Uh, I mean, 
What can you do with upkeep steps? Well, there's some things that only trigger in the upkeep. Uh, things like time counters, suspend. Uh, there's cards that let you draw in the upkeep. Like, this could be something kind of special. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, oxen you control have double strike. Oxen often don't have power. Anyway, uh, here are some creature type lines from the set. All right, we have an armadillo, a shark rogue, plant bard. That's a new one. Hey, a coyote, finally. Uh, Hormid Merc Homerid Mercenary. Oh, oh, the callback to Fallen Empires. I love it. Uh, Rhino Brawler, Ox, a Ox Angel. Are you shitting me? Um, porcupine Mount. You really ride a porcupine? Anyway. Legendary Creature Core Advisor. Legendary Creature Giant Scout. And finally, some names in the set. Boy, this ought to be good. So we have a claim jumper, Orma Posse, Gold Rush, Great Tank Train Heist, High Noon, Quick Draw, Reach for the Sky, a Resilient Road Runner, Coyote. Get it? Wally Coyote? I love it. God, tell me it's tell me it's Wally Coyote and the Road Runner. Tell me there's gonna be references. Tell me there's a special subset of cards with Looney Tune characters on them. Love of God, tell me it's so. Um, shoot the sheriff, and this town ain't big enough. So, as always, um, these are basically all themes, uh, names in the set, and this uh, to a Western-style set, uh, which I find very interesting, as I kind of wonder if this is going to be a new plane. It doesn't seem that way, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I mean, Thunder Junction could mean anything. I mean, hell, it could be New Capenna, as far as, I'm, as far as we know. It's just somewhere outside of the Capenna lands. Um, cause it's got a, some kind of weird story where it's, it's closed off from everything and I don't know, it's, it's magic, weird shit happens. Um, but yeah, so out of all this, I think the things we really should be watching out for is this card gains flashback, um, cause the flashback is zero depending on what this card costs or what the trigger is to get this ability. Uh, the fact that it says that card um, really worries me because it could mean lots of things. Um, if it's a card that lets you do it to cards already in your graveyard, that's going to be way broken. Um, if it's some kind of weird counter spell that lets them cast it again later with a flashback of zero, it's not really a counter spell. Does that make sense? Um, so... It could be if this card is countered, it gets flashback zero. No, it says that card. So, it, it, could, it could be a card very much like Eternal Witness that gives something in the graveyard flashback zero instead of putting it back in your hand. God, that would be broken. Um, but it also could be, there could be other texts as well that it gets exiled after the fact. But I think this is seriously one we need to look out for as far as dangerous mechanics to make a broken... Um, or overpowered card interaction inside the formats. Um, plotting, I mean, if it's just another form of manifestation or whatever you want to call the face card down stuff, um, for two less, we've seen this all the time, so this is not a real big deal. I'm interested in the, you can't cast this first, second, or third turn, so this is not a Sarah... Avatar, or whatever that thing was. Sarah Avenger, I don't remember. That was two white for a 3-3. Three, three, or one white. Hell, I don't remember. Um, but this could be a very powerful card. Um, depending on what it's on. Because it may not even be on a creature. It could be on an actual spell spell. Or uh, some other weird permanent. Um, if no mana... If, if it wasn't cast, or no mana was spent to cast it. So this is an effect that could be you free casting something, or... Uh, the fact that you flip a card over into exile, you don't cast it, so something happens. Um, also, if you give the card flashback for zero, uh, no mana to be spent, so you could trigger this card into this card. It could be some seriously weird stuff. Um, repeat the process X times. I mean, uh, I think it was um, Amon Kit that had that black card that did this. It became very popular. It was a very good card. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. It may just be a very high X spell that actually isn't relevant enough to play because it's just too mana intensive. 
typical cards for skeletons and zombies. This may not be a lore. This may just be a skeleton or zombie that comes from the graveyard. Um, I'm interested in, in the ability a creature token has never had before. Um, cards that swap or exchange control of three different card types. Um, if you guys played back in the day like I did, uh, around decks like Fruity Pebbles and Gifts, um, where you could give, you'd cast things like you know Illusion of Grandeur, gain your 20 life, and then give it to somebody else once they and they couldn't pay the upkeep, they lose 20 life. And since they didn't have, since they started at 20, if they didn't gain life, they immediately died. Uh, weird crap like that happening. Um, a new modal mechanic I'm not too worried about. I'm interested about the dual lands with the land subtype that's never been in dual lands before. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they play this out uh, as a powerful land cycle or a small common land cycle type. Uh, the mechanic that we've asked for for years but never made. I'm kind of iffy on that one. Um, but yeah, so... I mean, the rest of this stuff is also intriguing, don't get me wrong. However, uh, what I just listed to you, I think, are the things that we should seriously watch out for that could really warp the format uh, or even prices, depending on how good the card is and what its rarity is. If it's coming out as Mythics, it's going to be very expensive. And if it's highly playable, it's also going to be very expensive, which could be actually pretty sweet for a change since most of the cards we get aren't. Well, I mean, not counting Fallout. Normally, standard cards aren't that expensive. Just putting it out there. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. Until next time, be kind. And as always, I hope to see you across from the game table.